legal dictation 5 seconds comments the appellant brother of the deceased is in appeal challenging the acquittal of respondents number 1 and 2 the sister in law and husband of the deceased of the charge under sections 498a and 302 bar 34 ipc affirmed by the high court the deceased suffered 95 percentage burn injuries on 17 9 at about 4:30 pm and succumbed in the hospital the next day there is no eyewitness account the case of the prosecution is based on circumstantial evidence consisting of the dying declaration of the deceased the respondents were acquitted as the dying declaration was held not to have been proved in accordance with the law and it did not inspire confidence it facilitated between blaming the husband and the sister in law coupled with the absence of any certificate by the doctor that the deceased was in a fit state of mind when she made the dying declaration the mere absence of any endorsement in the dying declaration by the doctor with regard to fitness of the deceased to make the statement cannot vitiate its evidentiary value the fitness to make the statement was certified by the junior resident doctor none of the relatives of the deceased were present at that time the mere failure of the prosecution to examine dr anant sinha cannot be fatal to disbelieve the dying declaration and acquit the respondents there is no evidence that she was fully oriented with a fit state of mind to make a dying declaration there is no endorsement by the said dr anant sinha that the deceased was in a fit state of mind to make the declaration and that he was present during recording of the same the deceased initially named her husband alone as the person who set her on fire there was no reference to the sister in law or any demand for dowry subsequently she stated that she had been brought to the hospital by her husband and that she had been set on fire by her sister in law initially the deceased did not name respondent number 1 to the doctor at the time of mlc but only stated that she was set on fire by her sister in law we have considered the submissions on behalf of the parties and have also perused the evidence available on the record to the discretionary jurisdiction of this court under article 136 of the constitution is very wide it has been a rule of practice and prudence not to interfere with concurrent finding of facts arrived at by two courts by a reappreciation of evidence to arrive at its own conclusion unless there has been complete misappreciation of evidence or there is gross perversity in arriving at the findings causing serious miscarriage of justice if the view taken by two courts is a reasonably possible view this court would be reluctant to interfere with a concurrent order of acquittal a dying declaration is admissible in evidence under section 32 of the indian evidence act 1872 it alone can also form the basis for conviction if it has been made voluntarily and inspires confidence if there are contradictions variations creating doubts about its truthfulness affecting its veracity and credibility or if the dying declaration is suspect or the accused is able to create a doubt not only with regard to the dying declaration but also with regard to the nature and manner of death 
the benefit of doubt shall have to be given to the accused therefore much shall depend on the facts of a case there can be no rigid standard or yardstick for acceptance or rejection of a dying declaration